Let's talk about chemical formulas. Chemical formulas are sort of the language of chemistry. They are a way for chemists to represent certain types of substances in a more universal way so that everybody can understand them because not everybody speaks English. Um, and also in a much simpler way. Chemical formulas not only give you an idea of what the identity of the substance is, but they also tell you a little bit about what's in it. Okay, not everything, but a little bit. So let's take a look at some of the properties of chemical formulas. The first thing is that a chemical formula is a simple way of describing a chemical substance. It should tell you the number and kinds of atoms in one representative particle of a substance. Now, representative particle is a term that we use that's sort of general. Okay, There are specific names for these particles. You already know some of them. An atom. An atom is a representative particle of an element. It's the smallest piece of the element that still has its properties. A molecule is a representative particle for a, a particular type of compound. So if you're looking at a chemical formula, it's going to tell you what kinds of atoms are in there and also how many of each of those are in the particle. If you think to your shapes, right? If you had a triangle and a square stuck together, well, that would be uh, one triangle, one square. That's, that's what your formula is gonna tell you if you think back to our activity in class. The one thing that chemical formulas doesn't tell you that's very important is how the atoms are connected to each other, how they're hooked up in space. And that can actually be kind of problematic for some types of compounds. We're going to see. Okay, There are rules that will tell you how you have to write a chemical formula, but we will get into those rules much later on. We're not going to do that now. Okay, So here are some examples. Uh, I think every single one of these chemical formulas represents a substance you've heard of, and some of them you might recognize. I would hope at least maybe two of them. Okay, so starting with this first one over here, NaCl. Now you'll notice the chemical formula uses the chemical symbols of the elements that are in that compound. Na stands for sodium, Cl is chlorine, NaCl is the formula for something called sodium chloride, table salt. The formula Na and Cl has, it has an Na and a Cl, it's just got one of each of those. So I know that in a representative particle of sodium chloride, there is one sodium atom and one chloride atom. That's what that means. But now if we look over here, we have H2O. Now you should know what H2O is. I hope everybody does. H2O is water. But look at now we have a little number here. Okay, so we have an H, and then we have this little two, and then we have an O. Well, the elements, the kinds of atoms are hydrogen, H, and oxygen, O. The two is called a subscript, and it tells me that there are two hydrogen atoms in one molecule of water. And because there isn't a number after the O, I just know that to be one. There is one oxygen atom. So a water molecule is made of two hydrogens and one oxygen, and remember, they are connected by chemical bonds. Down here we have NH3. You may not have seen this formula before, but you've probably heard of what it is. It's called ammonia. And ammonia has the formula NH3. It has nitrogen, N, and hydrogen, H. But it has three hydrogen atoms and one nitrogen atom per molecule. And finally, this one might look familiar depending on if you remember your biology, C6H12O6. Now, I'm not going to give you the name of this one because there's something that we have to remember about chemical formulas, and we'll get to that in a second. But what's in there? Well, there's carbon, there's hydrogen, and there's oxygen. And in one molecule of this substance, there are six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. Now, you might want to call this glucose. And that's OK, because this is the formula for glucose. But it is also the formula for something called fructose and for something called galactose. There are a lot of different compounds that have the very same formula. So how is that possible? Well, what does this not tell me? It tells me what's in there, but it doesn't tell me how those atoms are connected. And if I change the way atoms are connected, I change it into a different molecule, a different compound. 
So this might be glucose, but I can't really tell just by the formula. I'd need more information. Okay, you're gonna get some practice now. I want you to write these down in your notes, okay? We have CH2O, that's formaldehyde. We have MgSO4, that's Epsom salts, if you've ever taken an Epsom salts bath. And then we have C2H4O2, which is acetic acid or vinegar. I want you to write them down and I want you to tell me what atoms are in there, what kinds of elements, and how many of each atom are, there are. Go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back. Did you get it? All right, CH2O, formaldehyde. You should have one carbon, two hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. For MgSO4, Epsom salts, you should have one magnesium atom, one sulfur atom, and four oxygen atoms. And for vinegar, you should have two carbon atoms, four hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms. That's all there is to it, and at this point, that's all I need you to know. Okay, we'll see what we can do with these formulas, and we'll see how to write them later on this semester. So, write down your notes, make sure you give it a try.